And hello all of my fellow nerds out there, this is Oracle Nerd Richie and welcome back to Our Life Beginning and Always. Oh my god, it's been a little while, I'm sorry. I, I'm extremely tired from Sunday, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very tired. But like, I, I, I've actually gotten myself hyped up for this and once again we're gonna be starting this episode off by ending the summer. I know, it's, it's pretty much blasé at this point, but... But let's go ahead and get right into it. Are you sure? Yes. Moths bounced against your window, attracted by the light of your room. A siren call in the slowly darkening sky just as the day was coming to an end. So too with summer. Liz would be moving back into the, into the dorms before long. Luckily, Lee had been able to come stay for a short trip before her own new journey began. She'd, have been, she'd officially been accepted to the first choice college college a few weeks ago. This was her last chance to see see you all in person for you flicked through the plan the plans for the next few months, realizing that you didn't even know when when you have had the next opportunity for everyone to be in the same place again. It was hard to think that you'd be you'd be likely be seeing even less of your cousin going forward, but you but you were delighted that she was pursuing her dreams. While you, were while you were still with each other, your family was going to have dinner together. As ever, the Holdens were tagging along too. Ooh, tropical place? Or the Chinese restaurant? Ooh. Uh, we went to the tropical place last time with, uh, with Kyra. Let's go to the Chinese one this time. It was somewhere your family had always enjoyed going, ever since you and Liz were tiny. That long-standing connection made it a fitting location for a final meal out before Liz and Lee set off again. Technically, you were getting ready to go out, go out through your mind, though your mind was only half on the task. It was pleasantly war warm evening, kind that epitomized the vacation feeling. That you were you were in no mood to spoil it by by rushing around. It was strange to think that summer was was coming to an end, yet you wouldn't be returning to school. That pattern had been in place as as long as you could remember, and had come to feel like a natural rhythm, as an inescapable as as inescapable as coming of the tide. This, this was the first time that you were going to be able to set your own tune. Whenever whatever came next was entirely up to you. The future looked bright. You couldn't wait to start your new life. You were nervous but ready. You were uncertain. It worried you. Just thinking about it made you queasy with stress. <clears throat> I wouldn't be able to wait. Let's go to the second one. You finally had freedom to discover what you wanted to do with your life, no longer shackled by the commitments and constraints from before. Mom called up from downstairs, tearing you away from your thoughts as, as, you told, as she told you it was time to head off. You raced downstairs, looking forward to the evening. Now, I wonder how different Cove will look in the, in the next step. Everyone piled into the car while it was marked... While well, it was marketed as, as being suitable to hold five people in pra in practice, it made it for a very tight fit. Your mom sit sitting in the front were fine. You, Liz, and Lee were squished in the back. Lee in the middle, wedged between you and your sister. The mom was an excellent timekeeper. Thanks to thanks to her efforts, you pulled up near the restaurant on time. Oh, uh, skip something. The process of getting out out of the car was slightly easier than squeezing into it, but with much less coordination required to release seatbelts than secure them. You gave Lee a hand as she cl clambered out from the middle seat, then, then headed into the building as a group. A waiter greeted you as you entered. Ma let him know that how many of you there would be in total. He, he went to arrange a table that, that met your needs. You return promptly to guide you to your seats. You perched comfortably in your in your chair. You held your head held aloft as as if buoyed as if buoyed by today's good fortune. Your, your family settled down around you, all cheerful and looking forward to, to the evening ahead. Your drink your drinks or, order had just been taken when the Holdens came through through the door. <coughs> 
They were pointed in, in your direction, though with Mom waving an arm in the air, it was hardly necessary. Cove and Mr. Holden came to join you at the table. <coughs> As greetings they were being exchanged, Cove took a seat opposite to you. It had been left empty by unspoken acknowledgement that you and Cove would, would be wanting to sit together. Mr. Holden sat beside him. Hi. It's great to see you. I'm glad you can make it. Hello, everyone. You wouldn't believe how hungry I am. I see. You came to the right place, then. There was some laughter, though Liz groaned play playfully, shaking her head at Mom's sense of humor. Growing up, she'd have complained, and Mom, Mom would have responded by making another comment. Liz had mellowed over the years, but she still made, made a show of despairing at Mom's jokes. Her reaction had... Her reaction to them had become a joke in its own right. Menus were, menus were soon passed around, and a temporary hush fell over the table as everyone read. It didn't last long, punctured, punctured by comments about what, what people had been eat, had eaten here before, and light chatter about what people were consi considering tonight. <laughs> Once the waiter had, had disappeared with your... Has disappeared with your orders, Cliff piped up. Okay. So I got some good news. Kyra's making a trip out here tomorrow. Cove nodded, turning to his father to the rest of the table. Yeah, we talked about it and figured out this was a good time for everyone. Very nice. That's great. I won't react positively to the news, though Ma look, looked wistful. It's a shame. If only we'd known. Here, here we are having a big meal without her. If we, if we'd waited one day, she could have joined us. Mom patted Ma on the back, genuinely, nu gently nudging her from, from the realm of possibilities and what ifs, and back to the evening that was going so well. Chin up, Lee and Liz. Liz, we, Lee and Liz will still be here tomorrow. We'll, we'll just have to throw a, throw another get together and keep the fun cha train chugging along. Ma smiled warm, warmly, taking Ma, Mom's hand in hers. That's true. There's plenty of stuff ce to celebrate right now, but there will be more good news and good times on the horizon. Right. Right. And speaking of, that's not all. That's not all we've got either. Mr. Holden's eyes were alight as he sat up, sat up straight in his chair, face angled towards the sun. He barely let, let a bee go by, nudging Cove with his elbow, pushing him to, to follow up with, on the announcement. He was very picturesque. He was a very picture of a proud papa. <laughs> Cove shied from the, from the limelight, ducking his head down and staring at his lap as he spoke. Well, well, it's just I switched over to working full time instead of only part time. Plus, I've been looking for, at apartments. There's a there's a few I can choose from. <clears throat> he flicked his ga gaze up at, at everyone around the table, a smile creeping over his face. I'll be pretty busy going forward. Apartments. He was moving. Cove was going to move out of his dad's house. After ten years, he he wasn't going to be your neighbor anymore. Mr. Holden gripped one of Cove's shoulders and gave it a loving shake. His excitement couldn't be cont contained. Incredible. Co Cove's actually going to make, make it to adulthood. It's a miracle. Mr. Holden le leaned back in his chair, staring up at the ceiling in mock wonder. I'm so glad. I wasn't convinced I'd able to he able to rear a kid all the way to this point, but thankfully I looked out and got the best boy that Dad could have asked for. Dad. Cove, bl Cove blinkered his vision with with his hands on the side of his face, temporarily blocking his father from sight. Despite his genuine bashfulness, which left him unable to meet anyone's eyes after all all the attention thrust his way, he was happy. Thanks. I was really lucky too. You're a good dad. Aww. Aww, come here. Mr. Holden threw, threw an arm around Cove's neck, pulling him, in, pulling him into a close up, close up, a, into as close of a hug as as, as seeing allowed. He he rubbed his cheeks on top top of his son's head while Cove chuckled, accepting the affection with good humor. <laughs> he looked around at, at the faces of of the company here. He, You've been on this journey with everyone here for years, seen them falter and grow, and they watched you go through the same. Cove was was leaving his family home. Liz was 
heading back to college while Lee was starting at hers. You were staying close, but you were clear but it was clear you were all heading in different directions to different destinations. Some near and some far, but it wouldn't be long until you were all going your own way. It was bittersweet, your heart swelled with pride, the thought troubled you. Hmm. It was bittersweet. You turned your head to the side, wistful, not wanting to spoil the evening with your troubles. You were glad that everyone was succeeding, but the idea of splitting up gave you a twinge of regret. <laughs> Twin? A twinge, you say? Oh, oh um, okay, I know. Shame, shameless, shameless plug is shameless, but I have a... I have a little I have a little ask blog you guys can go check out as well. It's called Twinge of Care. It's um it's in the it's in the bon it's in the description below in case you guys want to check it out. I promise you guys it's good. These people had been key pillars of your life. Days ahead without them, no matter how bright and shiny, felt a little empty, like a theme park after closing time. You might feel with the bitter part. You, but you focus your mind on the sweet side. <clears throat> New adventures were still ahead, and you could encourage that optimism. Uh, Cove brought some attention to, to himself with a clearing his throat and a small interjection. <clears throat> I'm gonna stretch my legs while we're waiting for the food and everything. Sure, sure. Sure thing, bud. With a tiny smile, he nodded. He nodded at his dad, but the lightness to his expression faded when he moved to face you. Wanna come? He was attempting to be su subtle, but there was no ob but there was very obviously something on his mind. Something he wanted to talk to you about alone. Oh? You watched him with concern as he rose from your seat. Yeah, sure. I'll go. Take care. <clears throat> with those funny words, the two of you walked, up walked about the place. He was trying to get as far away from everyone as possible without actually ex exiting the building. What did you need to say? He hadn't admitted what <clears throat> that was what this was about, but he didn't need to. Cove started pulling the hem of his shirt. He turned his head to, to face you, but it was but it was an awkward movement. Hi. Well, I I wanted to talk to you one on one about all this. You know, my work moving. I mean, it was coming before, but now it's pretty much here. Yeah, it's exciting. <clears throat> Cove stopped picking at his shirt and he seemed to respond well to that response. He was relieved that you weren't upset about it. I'm glad you think so. But then he looked down and his brows furrowed. He, you saw his hand shift away from his clothes and instead rub his arm. Are you looking forward to it? I am. I mean... Well, I'm trying to be. He dug his head further as you saw his face start to redden. But it's scary. I don't want things to end. Come on, you don't need to worry. You're, you're doing... You're going to do great things, so you're saying that you're going to dress up as the future for Halloween? <laughs> um, you're going to do great things. You're so nice to me. Cove then turned his head away and, and wrapped his arms around himself. You felt a sudden chill that definitely wasn't caused by the air conditioner. I was just thinking, are we really going to... Stay a couple? His words came, came out hesitantly. He didn't want to ask this. He didn't want a no. That's... I'm not just talking about today, but forever. Always. Even even if things change later, right, right now, do you feel like we can make it? Or do you think we can't last? That one day we'll have to move on? You got mad at him for this? You kept calm? You were always poor. You were as worried as he was. You kept calm. You understood his concern. He, it was definitely hard to imagine that that would happen. However, you you didn't let, your, let yourself get upset. I want it to be forever. I'll make sure we always are. I'm yours as long as you want me. I don't know, but it's going to be all right. <clears throat> I'll make sure we always are. You were going to keep the key things up. There was no way you were going to let this fall down down the wayside. Cove laughed with a delicate smile on his face. <sighs> okay, you win. I wanted to prepare myself for the horrifying unknown, but you're kind of giving me no choice but to be optimistic here. His eyes sparkled with mischief. 
strong armor. That's right. Oh no, I can't believe you're be being forced to have hope about life. <clears throat> I'm happy to hear that. You're welcome. You snickered. Um... <clears throat> That's right. He chuckled again before he continued his train of thought. Thanks for listening to me, Richie. It helped. He felt pleased that his anxiety had eased after talking it out. Want to go back to the table? I bet everyone's wondering where we've been yeah. up to. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot what we were doing. That'd probably be good. With matching smiles, you both reclaimed your seats at the table. Both of you felt lack felt lighter at and it showed. Mm -hmm. You seem happy. What what was that? What was that? Yeah, it looked like you were having quite the conversation over there. It's neighbor stuff, sorry. <laughs> I I used to be your neighbor. They waved out their questions and you didn't offer any explanations. They they still seem curious, but caught but caught that Cove wanted to stay between between the two of you and let it drop. They, things relaxed and you two took a sip of your drink. Lee idly tapped the table and, and got your attention. I'm so excited to try this place. Mmm. I haven't been here in a long time. I hope it's as good as I remember. All the restaurants in the area are pretty, are pretty top notch in my humble opinion. We'll see. It was a challenge. It was a challenge issue. Liz carried herself like some sort of professional food critic, and Mom snorted. <laughs> Tough crowd. Jeez, Liz. Ma giggled and chimed in as well, much to Liz's embarrassment. That's right, Lizzie. Jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez, Louise. You shook your head at all the silliness. Why Why was your family like this? Jeez. Everyone burst out laughing, besides Liz, of course. She smirked. No, no one could ever accuse your family of being no fun. Night fell soon after everyone finished their meals. And before you knew it, you were standing in the parking lot saying your goodbyes and packing up the cars to go home. After the last of the chores were done, your family spent some more time together. The rest of the night felt like it was going by in a blink of an eye, and somehow the time came to retire to your, to your room to sleep. You pulled up your covers and un up under your chin and settled down for a night, getting warm and cozy. As your head sang in your pillow and you closed your eyes, your mind drifted back to everything that happened that day. You could, you could see it all now, behind your eyelids, as, as though you were experiencing it all over again. And then the image of Cove popped into your head, and you smiled softly to yourself. Chad text him to come over. You want to sneak out to his room? Oh, change things up a bit? You're feeling tired, so you snuggle out deeper into your bed. Honestly, that kind of, that kind of just sounds like me. <laughs> um... You know what? Let's surprise him. Let's surprise him. Let's sneak out to his room this time. Because he's always sneaking over to ours. Let's, let's surprise him. If Cove could do it, then you didn't see why you shouldn't be allowed to. You made up your mind. As quietly as you can manage, you put on your shoes and slipped out of your, of your room, closing the door behind you softly. Heading slowly down, you took care not to make the floor creak, especially the boards right by the bathroom. Those definitely squeaked. The stillness of the night made even the slightest sound seem so much louder to your ears. You were very aware of your mom sleeping nearby. Upon reaching the back, the bottom, you tiptoed across the floor to the front door. Slip out into the crisp night air, you shut the door look, looking at the look and took a relieving breath. Blech, I can't read. Excitement right, rising, you dashed across the, the street towards Cove's house. The road, too, was surreal at this hour, familiar and yet strange. It might have been eerie at, at another time, but with how eager you were, you hardly cared. You attempted to find your way from a normal footpath to, to the side of the condo, but, but the limited light was making it difficult. 
You knew for sure which window was Cove's, and luckily for you, it was on the first floor. Unlike Cove, you wouldn't have to, have to do any building scaling. All you needed to do now was make it safely over the fence and past the bushes without being caught. Or injured. Sneaking closer, you glance over the hedges towards Cove's Co's bedroom window, finding it cracked open. Open. Perfect. You wouldn't have to knock and worry him him not, an, but him not answering. Forcing yourself up with ease, you cleared the fence and avoided the, the shrubs and darted over to the window. You buzzed with nervous excitement as you approached it in, it in the dark, having successfully made it all the way there unseen. Lifting the window up was so it was fully open, you pushed yourself halfway halfway through, your legs dangling into the un, into the underbrush below. It was a little awkward as a small shelf was right in the way. You had you had to take care not to knock over a couple of plants, but you made it through with, with minimal noise. And safely inside, you dusted yourself off and turned back to close to close the window gently, with only with only the soft glow of moonlight and coast fish tank there to see to see the way. You gave your small gave a small wave to the special fish you you got the fish you got to name Sunbeam. Oh, oh wait, I just, no, I just, okay, sorry, I'm just looking from the dialogue box. I just noticed the room looks different. Oh, I love how different it looks. <laughs> then straining your eyes through the dark, you crept towards Ko's bed, barely making out the sleeping figure beneath the covers. By the sound of his soft breathing, you could tell that he, did, he hadn't heard you come in, a small smile tugging on your lips. You started to move a lot of noise, you poked him until he woke up, you nudged him gently, you whispered his name, you sat there on top of him, <laughs> you, you left him to sleep and sat beside him. Oh, come on, what? Wh whisper his name. Ko? You figured he must be in deep sleep if you continue snoozing away. Position your lips beside his ear, you tried again. Ko? Wake up! This time, his sleepy, sleepy eyes. Sleepily eyes blinked his eyes and mumbled something incoherent beneath his breath. Hey, I wanted to come over. Is that all right? He let out a yawn and rolled towards you, waking up just enough to understand the question, but not the full context. A faint smile appeared on his face. Hmm. What? Mm, yeah, I want you here. He reached for you, his arms wrapping around your neck as he pulled you towards him. When your foreheads touched, he gave a satisfied sigh. Then, as if totally un unaware of what he had done, he started dozing off again. <laughs> you, snick you snickered quietly to yourself as you sat there. He, he, he could figure it out on his own, and after a few seconds, he did. Wait, Richie? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> he shuffled under the covers and sat up as he, as to stare at you in alarm. <laughs> what? Why are you in my room? What happened? A smile slipped in your face and you finally registered your presence for real. <laughs> you hugged him. Lean forward, you wrapped your arms around Ko, fe feeling him freeze for a brief moment. When he relaxed, he hugged you back softly. You let out a small sigh. It's okay. It doesn't really matter why you came. It's okay. You helped... You held him for a little while longer, letting his hug relax you until you pulled back and looked at him gently. I should have known you'd do this one of these days. It's only fair. You let out a breath, feeling relieved that, that he didn't seem bothered by it. In fact, it felt kind of good to see... Good. You thought maybe that his enthusiasm was why Cope did so often. He pushed himself up fully, swinging his legs over the side of the bed and leaving a spot for you beside him. His hands shook when where he held held them in his lap. He was nervous. You can stay as long as you want. Really? Yeah, really. How long do you want me to stay? Well, well, to be honest, there aren't a lot of situations where leaving you is is ever what I want. I guess only uh, I guess I. I guess only when I annoy you and you need space. <sighs> you chuckled softly, doubting that would ever happen anytime soon. Okay, I won't go anywhere. His face lit up as he settled in even more. 
I secretly slept over in your room before. It's fair that you get to do, do it too. You, sn you snickered, feeling, feeling pleased with your decision to do this. Okay, but there's no way I'm letting you take the floor this time. Well, looks like you might be getting the floor yet again. <laughs> there's no way I'm letting you take the floor this time. Here we go again. You rolled your eyes and let, let out a soft laugh, which Cove returned as, as he rubbed the back of, back of his neck. No, seriously, you can have the bed. I, I want to share. Can you try to stay? I'll take the floor if I insist. <coughs> I insist. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind if you took the bed. I appreciate you taking the floor, Cove. <laughs> um, I want to share. Can we? Can you try to stay? His eyebrows dipped. It, he he was growing visibly nervous. It it was to be expected. But after what happened last time, you'd been waiting for another chance. You hoped that he felt the same, and it seemed it seemed he did. Yeah. Yeah. This time we can share. You'll really stay. You won't leave me on. The, you won't leave leave to be on the floor. He nodded, holding back your back your delight. You try not to grin as. You try not to grin as his son, at his son, resolve. Um, we were going to share a bed. You could, you could hear the tremble in Cove's voice as, as he held his hands together to keep them from shaking. He let out a breath and shook his hands from in front of him, mentally preparing himself. It's gonna be all right. His mouth set, set into a grim line. He, line, and he ball, and he balled his hands into fists as he, as his. At his side, determined. <laughs> you were glad. He, you were glad he was making the effort. It was important to step. In, it was an important step in your relationship, and he seemed to understand that. It only took a couple of moments longer before he turned to you, attempting a weak smile. Ready? Yeah. Well, let's get in there. He took a deep breath, and you slid under the covers, making room for him to get, to get in after you. Laying as straight as a steel rod, Cove tensed up beside you. So sti so still he was barely breathing at all. You, you rested on your side and, and faced him. Your eyebrows pinched in, in the middle you, as you watched him. He looked back at you deeply. Do you need more time? I can leave until you're more set up here. Uh. No, please don't go. I just want you to stay with me. Ever, ever so slowly, he began to relax, his fingers tentatively brushing up and down your arm. His eyes shut, lashes fanning out over the top of his cheeks. And yeah, you still half expected him to run away like last time. But he didn't. He stayed right where he was. Don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about me. Doing stuff like this isn't a problem. It's a process. You nodded in understanding. Even though he couldn't see... See it, giving him time to let his nerves, nerves settle. After pulling up your pillow and getting yourself comfy, you stayed quiet. Eventually, his shoulders became less rigid. When his eyes opened up, he smiled and turned his head towards you. Thank you for waiting again, as always. <laughs> he laughed shyly, his soft eyes meeting yours through the dim light. Are you okay? Yes. I am now that you're here. I'll always wait for you, Cove. It took you long enough, but it's fine now. You know it quietly. I'll always wait for you, Cove. He squeezed your ar arm a little tighter, his lips cur curving into a smile as he looked at, at you in awe. He shuffled closer, an inch at a time, before nuz nuzzling into your neck and wrapping his arms around your side. You got your arm around him. Your fingers gently brushed up and down, down his back as you held him close. The room grew quiet around you. The, s the only sounds to be heard were the faraway crash of the ocean waves and, and your breath mingling in a small space between you. Cole's heart was pounding, the thump of it rumbling th through as you spoke again softly. That's... As, as he spoke again softly, my bad. Aww, my poor boy! So basically, what I'm trying to say is that I'm glad you're never given up on me. It means a lot. It means everything to me. 
You don't give up on me either. You've been there whenever I really needed it. It's who you are and I accept you. You smiled in understanding. It's who you are and I accept you. Oh, his eyes glossed over a little as, as, you, as he squeezed closer, you closer to him and smiled. His heart rate finally relaxing to a normal rhythm. Good night. Good night, Richie. Good night. He leaned forward and kissed you tenderly, his hands gently moving to the, to cradle the back of your head. I love you. My boy! I love you too. You were still smiling as you snuggled him, getting as close as you could. Cocooned in his warmth, you easily grew comfortable next to him, feeling him ease into you as well. For long, your eyes were growing heavy, and you drifted off into a restful sleep side by side. The next morning, you woke slowly from the comfortable dream. With, with a small stretch, you opened your eyes fully and the sun shining through the window. Shuffling onto your side, you noticed Cove still beside you in the bed, sleeping soundly. His arms continued to be draped around you loosely as he snoozed. He mu you must have fallen asleep that way. You smiled, remembering the prior night. It had been nice to spend the night together, getting to be with him in a whole different way. You could definitely get used to it. <laughs> you know why I'm gonna choose. Being careful not to wake him, you bent over and pressed your lips against his skin. He stirred a little in response, a small sleepy smile appearing on his face. Then a loud noise suddenly started you and you snapped towards the, sound, the source of the sound. Uh oh. It was the door opening abruptly, and the frame stood Mr. Holden, smiling brightly. He hadn't seemed to notice you straight away. Get your butt out of bed, sport. Mom's here. Oh? <laughs> All of a sudden, the two of you made eye contact. He froze where he stood, the smile slowly slipping from his face. Uh -huh. Well, uh, that's not what I usually walk into. I clearly should have knocked this morning. <laughs> um, good old, good old Cliff surprises. <laughs> <laughs> you should, it's, it's not what you think, I swear! <laughs> you pulled the blanket up over your head. You screamed. Um, good morning, Mr. Holden. Of course, Co would get away with sneaking into my room, and I'm the one who gets caught. You, yeah, you should have knocked. Your mouth wordlessly fell open. Uh, good morning, Mr. Holden. <laughs> morning, Richie. <laughs> Co blinked his eyes tiredly and mumbled something incoherent before turning towards the door. Both you and Mr. Holden stared at him for a few moments, neither knowing what to say or do. Cove, who continued looking at that dozily, was obviously having a hard time trying to process the situation. <laughs> There's his realization. Then his eyes widened. Dad? Cove scrambled from the bed in an attempt to get to his feet, pushing the covers back off with both of you. <laughs> Forgetting there was, there was an overhang ceiling above him, he shot upwards and it hit his head on the wood. Ouch! Ow! <clears throat> he flopped back down on the pillow, pressing his hand to his head and groaning loudly. <laughs> you have to see you guys in horror. Cove! You could you can only stare in shock at all of this. <laughs> Cove! You reached out towards him instinctively. Hmm. Cove, bud, are you alright over there? Mr. Holden ste stepped further into the room. His eyebrows furrowed in concern as he bent down towards his son. Yes! Yes, please just go. Okay, okay, yeah, I'll leave. <laughs> Cliff! Cliff held his head, held his hands in front of him in a calming gesture, even though Cove couldn't see it. He turned to, to make his exit, but stopped abruptly in the doorway, obviously deciding he had something more to say. I know we talked about this before, but I feel like now is one of those times to mention that I was barely older than you when I found out I was gonna be a daddy. So, just if there's anything you need to say or ask about, we are not having kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love this game. I know, I was only saying, at this age, things can move fast, and... He let out a heavy sigh, running his hand over his, his face before stopping himself and think saying calmly. You know what? It's fine. We'll chat about this later. Kara's awaiting. With that, he stepped back out of the room. <laughs> giving, giving the two of you one, giving you one last look before pulling the door shut behind him.
Toe broke his face before dropping his head into his hands and mumbling fing between his fingers. Oh my, oh my god. god. Oh my god. He patted him on the leg. Well, that was fun. You covered your face with your hands. Well, that was fun. He said nothing, and you got the impression he didn't appreciate your, your comment. With a heavy sigh, Ko forced himself to sit up again. He frowned hard, staring over at the closed door. Sorry. What my dad said, that was really, really dumb. It wasn't something he should have brought up. You knew which comment meant, which comment Kof meant. The one about how Mr. Holden had gotten Kyra pregnant by mistake. <laughs> that that wasn't something that would, that would happen with you and Kof being together. I mean, probably because we're both guys. So... Kind of obvious. Though, there, though I, I will tell you guys, there is more than one way to be a, a, a parent at all. No, no need. We're not, not, not something we're going to get into, though. I think he was just trying to show how serious spending the night is in, in general. He wasn't trying to compare us with him. You appreciate Cope's words. It was really dumb. Yeah, incredibly, amazingly, ridiculously. Thanks. You both simultaneously released a deep breath. I guess we can't just hide in here now. You gave us you gave a sidelong glance, and display his displeasure at the situation, a small smile quirked in his lips. It's nice. It's too bad. I had it had been really nice. Too bad is right. I hope we'll get the chance to do this again soon. You found yourself smiling along with them. The two of you took a few minutes to, to get up properly and get yourselves as ready as possible. Ko put, put his glasses back on before heading out to see Kyra. Oh! Wait, are, are these- are, are those his pajam- her pajamas? I, oh no, I thought it was pajamas. No, it's just casual. <laughs> My bad. Kyra was uh, Although I, I probably- although Kyra kind of looks like the type that would have one of those, um, those eye cover things when you sleep. You know, the- I, I, I forgot what it was called though. Kyra was waiting patiently in the living room. She was in high spirits, and, and her eyes- and her eyes were set in the hallway. Her amused smile only widened when you- when you and Ko froze. It didn't take long for the realization to sink in that the scene must have been loud enough for her to hear from even there. Ko tried to look unimpressed, eyes narrowing over Kyra's smug delight, though his face was already turning red and his mom hadn't even said anything yet. He squared his shoulders and lifted his head and strode forward. Hey. Hi, Mom. Hi, baby. And hello to you too, Richie. Her tone cracked in, cracked in her greeting, and then she she just gave in and laughed, unable to keep any of it in. Ko frowned at that, and his eyebrows furrowed. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. I didn't know you already had guests. His frown wobbled as, as he ca became even more embarrassed by this moment. He couldn't muster up the words to defend himself. Well, it's not like anyone's surprised by this. I'm sorry. Hi. You don't have to laugh. You didn't say anything. Well, it's not like anyone is surprised by this. Carol laughed even harder that time. As it's as it slowed, she brought a hand up to cover her mouth. But you both can still see her shoulders shake. Cove still looked mortified, but he shot you a stern look. Shot you a stern look. All you could do is smile. Ko was still unable to say anything, other than his teeth bite, biting into the inside of his cheek. The, he shook. He stood there frozen. Kyra studied both of you for a moment. It's alright. It's okay. My not so little Mister is spreading his wings. I can't complain about that. Actually, that makes sense considering his pajamas have like a, a wing pattern. I really like that. She slightly tapped the tip of her nose and. and that got a tiny smile out of Co of his nose. That got a tiny smile out of Cove. This might be much taller than Kyra at this point. He still seemed like like a little kid in front of her. You released the, you released the air you were holding in your lungs when Kyra's gaze logged onto you. You know we were just about to go over see Pam and Noel. Are you two coming? I'll go. He stretched his he stretched his arms for a moment and yawned, trying to physically shake off what happened. Sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. Great. Great. Let's do it. It was 
It was then that you, that you noticed Mr. Holden standing on the other side of the room. You, you, fi you figured he must have been trying to create some space for everyone during the last conversation. You, you could tell he was he felt a bit awkward, but he tried smiling reassuringly as he scratched, scratched the back of his neck. His attention went to Cove. Now look at all three of them here. But do you want to get changed first? Cove looked down at his pajamas for a moment. He shook his head. No, we we don't have to wait for that. Are you sure? It's only a trip across the street. Don't worry about it. I'm alright. Besides, Richie is going to be in pajamas too. Fair point. Cove then leaned in closer to you. He grumbled quietly. And your moms are going to figure out what happened anyway, so... Yeah. Come on. <laughs> anyway, away we go. Oh right, Pam and Noelle are the moms, I forgot. <laughs> I keep forgetting their names for some reason. With that decided, the four of you headed across the, out the street to your house. It felt strange waiting there while Mr. Holden knocked on the door. <laughs> oh? Hello. Hi there. Mom answered the door and her expression brightened even more seeing Kyra there. She pulled to... She moved to pull Kyra into a hug Then her, when her gaze fell on you. Richie? Hi, Mom. How? When did you get out there? Why are you still in your pajamas? Mom's eyebrow raised as she gave you a deep, examining stare. Meanwhile, you and Co slowly shared a slow side glance with each other. Before you can answer, more heads popped into view around the doorway. Ma, Liz, and Lee were all chuckling. <laughs> to be honest, I always assumed Cove has been the one sneaking out. Her eyes sparkled with amusement as, as you as you had to look away. You know, you know, his Cove's face was burning red again. It was a, it was a solid theory, Lonnie. M most likely, they've been both breaking and entering. I, I wouldn't put it past, I wouldn't put it past my baby. He takes after his parents. Mm -hmm. You're right. I can't believe my Richie has been getting up to all that mischief too. Mortified, Cove looked looked like he wanted to disappear, while the adults chuckled and discussed what you and him may or may not have done. Fortunately, they left the conversation there. Enough of standing ar around out here. Come on in. Mom moved aside to usher, to the, usher the group in, and, got, and guided them to the living room before anyone could get settled in. Mom spoke up. Mom spoke up. You're all, you're all welcome to stay for breakfast. We still have some great spices and stuff from the farmer's market. Of course. Yes, we'd be thrilled to host you. There were, e there were eager nods from Mr. Holden and Kyra, but Cove looked around the room filled with familiar faces before speaking up. Maybe instead of staying here, why don't we go to the beach? Hmm. A scenic picnic, eh? Mr. Holden crossed his arms and con contemplated the idea happily. Excited, Kyra clapped her hands together. Yeah. Oh, we could... Oh, we could really make a day out of it. Maybe as well, well as enjoy the ocean while we can. That sounds that sounds lovely, Cove. Everyone else put the put in their own agreement with Cove's suggestion before long both families dispersed, getting everything ready. Sandwiches had to be made, water, sunscreen, towels, more and more needed to be gathered and packed. Plus, you and Cove both both took some time to get dressed for the day. You decided to bring bring the bottle of chocolate. Ooh, we never drank the bottle of chocolate cream? Hmm. Let's do it. Today felt su sufficiently special to bust it out. <laughs> An hour later, both your, fa your family and Coes were walking down the old path to the beach. The morning was already turning to a bright and beautiful day. You honestly couldn't ask for better weather for a beach trip. The moment you laid your eyes on the full view of the ocean, you stopped and stood there me mesmerized. It didn't matter that you grew up there, the sight always filled you with wonder. Hey, Richie? Hmm? So? I was thinking about calling Terry and Miranda, see if they can come too. Everyone else is pretty much already here, so will your family mind? That'd be cool, I'll ask them. You were already excited, excited at the prospect of seeing your friends today that you immediately darted away in the direction of your, mom, your mom's wind. Behind you, you could hear the familiar sound of Cove laughing. 
I have a question. Would it be alright if Terry and, Mar and Miranda came by as well? I don't see why not. Ma look, looked to Mom to see what she thought, and she nodded in agreement. Mom then shot a glance over at, Mith at Mr. Holden and Kyra, knowing that they had likely heard everything. You all right with that? Cliff, Kyra, what do you two think? The more the merrier. Okay. Of course, they're welcome with me. Thanks. Delighted, you nodded and turned on your heels. Cove was several feet away talking to Lee and Liz, likely about the same topic. With, with a beaming smile, you gave him a thumbs up, and the two of them must have must have also approved, as Cove quickly got his phone out and started making the calls. At that, you turned your attention to helping with the picnic setup. Unexpectedly, your phone started vibrating. You duck it out, curious to see a caller, ID, a caller ID, feeling your heart jump with excitement. You answered the video call request. It was Derek! Derek! Oh, we haven't seen him in so long! I, 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 wonder, I wonder how he looks in this chapter. Hey, it's been a while. Yo! <laughs> Bro, he looks so cool! Seriously, but what's up? The voice that came through, through was much deeper than you than it had been when you were when you first met. But it still had the exact same amount of enthusiasm as a kid. Have you been enjoying these crazy summer days? Dude, the fucking wink, that kills me. <laughs> uh yeah, I have. It's been amazing. There are ups and downs. It's been memorable to say the least. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sounds interesting. You have to catch me up on that. What about you? How's your summer been? <clears throat> You're beyond curious to know what Derek had been up to since the last time you spoke. He chuckled, noticing you and inve your invested tone. Honestly, I've just been slammed with stuff lately. College applications and scholarship inquiries. What else is new? I bet you're even more toned than, than you la than the last time I saw you. <laughs> you joked. <clears throat> your, your, your only real struggle is choosing which place to go. They'll, they'll all be desperate to have you. I wish you nothing but good luck. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> second one. <clears throat> totally. His chuckle turned to a sigh when, when you could hear a small smile when he spoke. I really hope so anyway. That would be amazing. What about your family? Are your brothers going being good? My little, little brothers are little punks, but I guess they're doing alright. You both laughed at that. It was easy to imagine the grin on his face. Mom and dad are fine. That's great. My moms are too. Turning your attention back to your surroundings, you smile warmly at your family buzzing around. Towels are laid out and chairs and umbrellas were being set up. Actually, hmm? I'm out with my moms right now. Lee and Liz are visit visiting too. Oh, that's fun. But if that's the deal, I'll let... I'll let you get back to it. Are you sure? I don't mind. Uh huh. I'm sure. I I'm not about to lose. I'm not about to lose your number. Okay. Bye. Bye, Richie. Have a heck of a day. Dude, Derek's looking freaking awesome. I've never. I haven't seen him look that good in like forever, to be honest. Actually, actually, wait. We, we haven't. This is the first time we're seeing him look like this. My God, he just looks so cool. <clears throat> Hanging up the conversation, you left the ener you left it left you energized and in good spirits. It was exactly what you needed to make this day even better. You hurried over to your mom's and helped helped put the rest of the food out. In moments, you noticed Cove at your side. So, what did they say? They're gonna come. Cool. Thanks for calling them. No problem. I'm glad I thought of it. They they'll meet us here later today. Shouldn't be too long. I can't wait. Once the setup was done, everyone everyone got comfortable and dug into the food. You couldn't remember the last time breakfast tasted this good, but but you att attributed it to to the gorgeous ocean view and soothing sea breeze. The conversation shifted to what you all would do next. In that case, we could do a few rounds of volleyball. There's plenty of us now. Is that all right? Could I play, Miranda? Of course. Miranda brightened, del delighted with this plan. Ma looked around to see if there was any other takers. Hmm. 
Hmm, I don't feel like playing. I'd have to change, but it'd be fun to watch. I could be the ref. My eyes won't miss a thing. Volleyball is a good idea, but there should be pl there should probably be something happening for those who aren't a fan. Oh, I have some I have some crafting supplies we could use to make jewelry. We we could even use use the stuff that we found around the beach to, to accentuate them. Really? What? Really? I want to I want to make a necklace. That'd be great. I'd be interested in trying my hand at that too. You know what, sure, let's go ahead and play some volleyball. You looked at Ma, ready to jump into the competitive mode. She she looked thrilled to have you on board. I, I'm game to play some volleyball. Now the plans were settled, the group temporarily split into two. Anyway. Alright, sports stars. You're gonna have to pick partners, then, then it's game on. <clears throat> Mr. Holden left the rest to you of you to delivery and turn turn his attention to drawing the makeshift court in the sand. Well? Well? She walked over to you and hooked your, her arm around yours. You laughed. I want to be on Richie's team. Would it be okay if I was on Cove's team? <laughs> um, hmm. You know what? Sure. Why not? <clears throat> Alright, it'll be my and me. You wanted to have fun with your ma. Co put his game face on, not intending to go easy on you now that you are on opposite sides. Co then turned to Miranda. He, he, he definitely looked determined. Ready to win? Yeah. Yeah. When Mr. Holden finished drawing the court, he went and fetched the volleyball from various other supplies that you all brought here. Sounds like we have our teams all set, right? Good, good. Now, now get to your sides. <clears throat> the four of you situate yourselves on either side of, side of the court in, with your partner. Mr. Holden tossed the ball to Ma. Do you mind? Since this was Nolan, Nolani's idea, I think it's fair that she gets the first serve. Thank you, Cliff. Yeah. Woo! Ma, show up who's boss. Go, Richie, make them eat sand. <laughs> <laughs> you kicked a small heap of sand out of your way for, on the simple court, making her laugh. <laughs> you turned your back your back towards Ma. <laughs> Don't hold back. I wouldn't think of it. <clears throat> With that, Ma got into position to deliver the practice first serve. The game began. In the battle over the volleyball, both teams scored points. Points. There wasn't a set amount to reach to end, to end things, so it just went back and forth as long as everyone wanted to play. The game went on for quite a while as everyone got into it, especially with the, with the cheers and added commentary. <clears throat> Liz and Mr. Holden made, <clears throat> made the whole game better with their humor and wit. <clears throat> from a distance, the jewelry making group group would also cheer when they heard shouts coming from, from coming out from the court. <clears throat> On top of that, they they would hold e they would hold each newly pe made piece of piece in the air, and players would take a breather to applause the creation. <clears throat> it wasn't until all, all of you were exhausted from run running and spiking and diving that the truce was that the truce was called. You enjoyed every moment of it. The afternoon continued to drift by, but but the fun was still going strong. Ko was thrilled when you pulled pulled out the drink you had been saving. It meant a lot to him that you wanted to savor it. It was worth it was worth the teasing smiles your family gave. Occasionally, someone would would head back to the houses to use the bathroom, rest away rest away from the sun for a while, or to retrieve something that they needed. But they always came back. <clears throat> the beach was never empty, and there was always a new conversation to take part in, or another game to join. At one point, Mr. Holden even broke out his pack of cards. He wrote the whole group into a few rounds of good old goldfish. There was only one thing that could bring this beach day to an end, and that was for, and that was for the, the day itself to end. Before anyone realized that the sun began to, to set over the sea. As that happened, you were taking a break, sitting on a towel with your legs stretched out past it. 
your feet buried in warm sand. Shortly, you looked up to see your mom's approaching. They stopped in front of you and you smiled. Hey there, kiddo. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing really good. How about you? We're wonderful. They both sat down, squishing you between them. Ma leaned her head against against yours, and Ma rubbing the back your back soothingly. Nothing was more nothing more was said at first, but Ma sighed contently. Mom looked at, at you wistfully. We're both really proud of you, Richie. True. You gr you grew up to be more than we ever could have hoped for. <laughs> it's all. You already started tearing up. I'm not sure if I deserve any of that, glow of that glowing praise. Thank you. It's only thanks to you, too. Mom wrapped an arm around your middle and squeezed you tightly in a, in a, sli in a side hug. Mom continued lightly scratching your back. Thank you. That means a lot, but I still think you're selling yourself short. You've always been a lovely person. I'm so thrilled to know you. Your voice faltered. You honest, honestly couldn't imagine your life any other way. Ma Lily brushed some of your hair back and left a small kiss there. I'm so happy I got to have both of you and my both of you as my moms. <clears throat> After that, all three of you were sitting there, there getting all sentimental. I don't know how we got so lucky with you and Liz. <clears throat> Ma reached out in front of you, at, you and your and your mom's hand, for your mom's hand. She gave she gave it to her and Ma squeezed it. Mm. Richie has a point. We must have done something right. You stayed there quietly and contently, watching the sunset with your parents for a while. Until Mr. Holden called out to you. He was still walking your direction. <clears throat> we were t we were talking and think we're gonna walk down the sh down the shore. Any of you want to come? Automatically, you looked at your moms and and for what they were thinking, Mom glanced from from you to Ma and smiled. That sounds good to me. That's fantastic. Yes, that'd be very nice. My legs need some stretching. Let's go. Throw Mr. Holden threw out a thumbs up and began heading back to the way he came in a light jog. Hey, don't leave us in the dust. Cliff kept going forward, but flipped, the, but flipped around, walking backwards across the sand so he could face you again. No worries. <clears throat> don't worry. We, won't, we wouldn't leave without you. All right, we'll catch up. Ready to go? Uh, uh-huh. Both of you and your moms have held a hand out to you. Chuckling, chuckling, you gave them each one, and you all strolled back with the rest to the rest of the group. When Liz was in reach, Ma used her free hand to pull pull her in, pull her into it, into it too. Liz shook her head, but her mom but her mouth corked into a smile, and she and she didn't resist. Together, as a family, you follow behind the others, hand in hand. Your feet squished into the wet sand as the waves rolled over them, and you didn't have, have a single care in the world as more and more stars began to dot the sky. Once the sun had, had long been out of sight, it was finally time to pack up. Oh, oops. The closing of the, closing of the day and ever-approaching end of summer seemed to intertwine. It can, it caused a quiet, reflective mood to blanket over the group. On, on the beach, Terry and Miranda looked, took turns compressing, compressing Cove into a hug before moving on, on to do the same to you. You chuckled, still overjoyed that you got to see them today. <clears throat> uh. I'm sorry we have to go already. My parents are here. That's okay. But still, I wish we could help clear this all up. Don't worry about it. Just thanks for coming out, to, out today. It was cool having everyone here. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, I'm super glad we came. Hopefully we can do do it again sometime. Nodding, you turned your attention to Terry. She wore a large grin on her face and held out a hand for for a low five. You obliged. See you later. Take care of yourselves, helps buddies. After that, they walked away, waving to you and Cove as they went down the, sh the shore. Co waved quietly back, quietly back with a small smile on his face. So you trip back. You waved too. 
It was a big wave. You hope you hoped Miranda was right and was right and there would be another day like this soon. Taking you by taking you by surprise, Terry jumped and twisted around. She she kept up with Miranda by walking backwards. <laughs> she kept the mood of you, of your farewell light by shooting finger guns at, at you and Cove. Miranda bumped bumped her with a hip. It left everyone with, with a laugh just before they disappeared down the bend. Richie? Come on. Hey Cove, you can you come here? <clears throat> Both of your parents were motioning for you. The two of you went to them. Tons of tons of things ended up at that beach over the course of the day, so there was still so much to pack up. The parents needed help. With a nod, you got to it, stuffing various things into bags and bundling them, them up in towels. Once things were ready to go, everyone filled, filled their arms with as much as they could carry. Absolutely no one wanted, to, wanted this to be a back and forth kind of task. The walk back home ended up being mostly quiet. Each person seemed to be feeling the effects of the day. A cold breeze carried you across the sand and onto the road. It was a sigh of relief from what felt like the group as a whole when, when they arrived back in the neighborhood. Well, hello everyone. You glance to the side and spot a very recognizable face walking down the road. Is it? Hey, Baxter! Oh, hi Baxter. How are you? Do you need help with that? It's alright, this is our mess to clean up. Well. If you're sure then, I was simply heading home after getting some fresh air. The season is almost over after all. Yeah. Baxter was only a tourist. He would he wouldn't be in town much longer. This might even be the last time you happen to cross paths with him. You knew that, and so did he. If you have a minute, I'd just like to say it was a pleasure getting to know you both this summer. His head tilted towards you and he smiled warmly. Baxter offered you his hand. Use your freer hand to shake his. It was tough with, with what you were carrying, but you were able to extend one, one of your hands a bit. Baxter chuckled and shook it. I think we, I really enjoy, enjoyed meeting you. Glad to hear it. I'm delighted to hear that. I enjoyed this vacation immensely thanks to you. <coughs> Baxter turned to shake Cove's hand this time. He was a little incredulous for a for a moment, but then Cove eventually shifted when he was what he was carrying and took Baxter's hand. It wasn't long, but it was a solid handshake. Baxter was clearly pleased. I wish we had more time together. Here. But it was still nice a nice ride. Well it lasted. But would happily do it all over again. Bye, Baxter. Yeah, bye. Baxter nodded and what and walked a few steps towards his condo. He, he then stopped and waved. Goodbye. Why is his voice so smooth? Baxter sauntered away completely and disappeared inside the condo to return to his own things. His, his time with you and your family and your friends ending. You paused for a moment, staring at where he went. But afterwards, you looked back over the rest of the group. Lee and Liz were just going inside of your house. You couldn't spot Kyra or Mr. Holden anywhere. But the door to their house was wide open. Mom approached you with an amused look, look on her face. <laughs> Seems like you're holding up some holding things. Surprised, you glance down and take a quick, a quick inventory of what you were holding. Mom was right; some of it belonged to the neighbors. Would you mind dropping it off now? Can do. It's not a problem. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Cub took a few steps towards his house and stopped, waiting for you. <clears throat> Good night, Cove. I'll see you inside, Richie. Night. You caught up to Cove, and together you went over to his house, walking in the front door. You saw Kyra and Mr. Holden busily unpacking already. Things were scattered on, on counters, and they were moving around, around each other, putting the items away. They both lifted their heads when Cove closed the front door. Hey. It's nice to see you again already, Richie. Her teasing tone brought a, brought a light smile to your face. You have, you have to the stuff in your arms a little closer. I ended up with things from your of yours from the beach. Oh, thanks for getting that for us. Uh, you can put put it in mm, here on the coffee table. 
Mr. Holden pointed out at the surface he was referring to, and you immediately left what what didn't belong to your family there. Cove put his own things down on the floor, just as his feet wait, wading through the, everything strewn about about to reach his parents. Putting your family stuff on the ground, your family stuff on the ground for a moment. You dusted your hands off to straighten up. You needed a, sec, a second to re, a rest and a minute to re, resituate it all. You went over over to where the others were were too. Kara opened her arms wide, wanting to hug you. You you accepted. Happily, you went to her. She she held on tightly. Over the years, you were able to form a good r rapport with her, and you were grateful for that. You could feel it. You could feel in her hug how much Kyra had grown grown to care about you. It brought an affectionate smile to your face. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, Rick. Today, it was a blast. It's no problem. I had fun too. Kara eventually released you, but patted the tops of your shoulders as, as a final gesture. Thank you. Every time I've gone gone to come by, it's been an absolute joy. Things really could have worked couldn't have worked out better. Mr. Holden took took a step closer to you. Kara moved, moved aside to let him say goodbye too. He grinned. Thanks for always being, always being such a friendly neighbor, and not just right now, but for as long as I've known you. I didn't, I didn't always make it easy, but you and your family are good people. I really, truly appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thanks again, Richie. So much. At that, Mr. Holden re reached over and gave you a soft pat on the top of your head. I'm really glad that you guys are my neighbors. Mr. Holden's brow furrowed with emotion. Your words really did touch him. Me too. Mr. Holden was staring at you, but his gaze seemed far away. Maybe he was looking back at who who you used to be. The eight-year-old he asked to, to be his son's new friend. See you. Bye, Richie. He smiled softly. Then Cope took a step forward. He gestured to his pile of things he had carried into the house. Don't worry. Don't worry about all that. I'll put stuff away in a few minutes. <clears throat> right. I need to go do the same for my for my family. I figured. Cove walked to you at the door and held it open, taking one last check around to make sure you had all your things to bring home. And you went you went to the road. He leaned his body against the door frame, not following you out. So this is it, huh? Actually, uh, that's not what I mean. His expression twisted, and he shook his head a bit. Like he was trying to ba banish the pensive thoughts. Bye. I'll just say bye. Bye. I'll see you soon. Your mouth pulled into a soft smile. You weren't sure how you were trying to reach, trying, how you were trying to reassure more. Kara reached forward and gently cupped your face in one hand. His thumb tra trailed across your cheek, several hearts, for several heartbeats. Mesmerized by his blue eyes, you stepped forward, delighted to oblige the, the request by silently asking. He met you halfway with. Wait as you smiled into into the kiss. It was soft and soft with longing, your chest ached, knowing that there couldn't be anything more than this, at least for now. One of his hands grabbed onto the door handle firm and firmly held it. He was stopping himself from from coming along with you. <coughs> as you as you walked over to your own front door, you stopped. Turning around, you spotted Co right where you left him. You laughed quietly to yourself. For a small pause, you both stared at each other from across the street. Um, good night, you blew him kiss, you waved, you ran to hug him back. Hug him goodbye. <laughs> you know, you know what? I kinda wanna go all anime about this. Let's just let's just do what they usually do in anime, hmm? You put the remaining stuff on the beach down the step and almost tripped, tripped bolting across the road. Next thing you knew, you were diving into Ko's arms, wrapping your arm, arms around his neck, and for, the force of it all, all knocked you both loudly in the doorway. But neither of you cared. You both held each other tightly, and you buried your face in the crook of his neck. Night. Night, Richie. He smelled like, su like salt water and sunscreen, and like home. It was a, wh a while until either of you thought, thought to separate. 
Slowly, you made your trek home and collected what you left on the step into, into your arms again. Things couldn't be dragged out any longer. After one moment shared, after one more shared smile, you opened the door and went inside your house, shutting it behind you. A few steps in, you saw your family gathered in the living room. They were still busy, busy unpacking and cleaning. You had the things you brought to the pile on the kitchen counter. Mom stood up, rubbing her eyes a bit. She yawned loudly. I'm bushed. How about we finish the rest of the chores tomorrow? Yes, honestly, it's too late for this. Thanks. Please and thank you. Ma put her hands on her hips and turned to assess the room. Ma was not one who liked to leave a mess about, but she sighed. All right. I suppose I c we can make an exception for this usual, for the, the usual rule. It has been really a really long day. Liz grinned contently. Lee, Lee wasted no time in skipping over to you and hook, hooked you in a side hug. Good night. I hope you had the loveliest of dreams of, you know who, <laughs> you smug, you smug woman. <laughs> Lee ended, ended that sentence with a wink and a hearty laugh. She let you go. Laughs, you blush, you shook your head, you hugged her back. I hope you have good dreams too. <laughs> Lee's smile widened till, till it went from ear to ear. That would be a fantastic way to cap off today and start tomorrow. Here, here's to us, Richie. Tonight, tomorrow, and forever. You smirked at that. Yeah, family forever. Thanks, Lee. You're really lucky you're not quietly. Yeah, family forever. Lee leaned in close to whisper in the ear. You didn't fail to catch the teasing look on her face. Aww. Exactly. There's no escape. That got a laugh out of you. You literally pushed her shoulder. <laughs> Lee stretched her arms high over her head. She yawned loudly and look, looked at you with tired eyes. I think that's my cue to head to bed. Bye. I think so too. Have fun sharing your room with Liz. She laughed at that and Lee shuffled off towards the guest bedroom. Before you had a chance to do anything else, you could feel, feel the top of your head being tapped. You spun around to see Liz smirking. Nighty night. I, I'm heading to bed too. It's been a long day and I have to prepare for tomorrow. Exhaling, you automatically started fixing ba fixing the back of your hair. When Liz di didn't immediately walk away, you smiled softly at her. Everything okay? Her gaze moved away and you knew she had more to say. You waited patiently for Liz to compose her thoughts. Just, it's been a good summer. It was, it was nice to come back home. You nodded, and Liz gave you a teasing nudge as she went by. Amused, you turned and watched her go. Love you, baby brother. <laughs> um, good night, Liz. I love you too. Bye, older scissor. You gave, gave her a, a hug. Good night. You smile back. <laughs> you gave her a hug. Good night. Why not? You wrapped your arms around, around her back, around her back to hug her from behind. She laughed and patted your hands. Eventually, eventually you let Liz go from your grasp. <coughs> you, when Liz was out of sight, Mom started up the next conversation over her shoulder. Hmm. Aren't you heading out to bed too? I want to relax first. Desperately, you need some time to decompress and clear your mind. You worried if you went to bed now you, that you would end up staring at the ceiling all night. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ma came over too, smiling understandingly. She pulled you into a big hug. Love you. Alright, you do, you do what you need to. I love you. When you were done hugging Mom, Mom pulled you into another hug. Their actions basically handing you off to the basically ha handing you off to the other had you laughing jovially. I love you. I love you so much. You're the best parents. Ah, Ma's eyes sparkled from, from your compliment. Mom pulled you into another hug. Good night, kiddo. Sleep tight. Good night, sweetie. Night. <clears throat> After that, your mom's headed off towards their bedroom, down the hall. You were about to turn the other direction when you heard mom's voice. And don't let the bed bugs bite. You heard Ma chuckling as you watched them go, go with a smile. Time, time had passed, but... But you weren't entirely sure how much. Sighing, you sat up on the couch. 
It was a good rest. All your tired muscles felt quite relaxed. You, you got up, planning on going to bed, when something out the, out the window caught your eye. Oh no, are they doing a callback? Your feet brought you right in front of the large window spanning the length of the back wall. You stared out the hills behind your house. As if on cue, your phone came on, ordering you a notification. It was Cove. <sighs> Wanna hang out on the hill tonight? Something inside you told told you that this was the right kind of night to take a trip out there. You said you sent it back a quick very quick message. Yeah. No, a little heart. You went over to the front door, stepping over the threshold. Threshold, you gave the living room one last glance over your shoulder. Then you shut the door behind you. Silently, you made your way to the poppy hill. With light steps in the dark, you walked across the hill behind your house. Up ahead, at the very top, up silhouetted beneath the night sky, was a familiar figure already waiting for you there. Smiling, you wondered just how he always got there first. You had, you even had the advantage of living closer. Then again, and maybe it was only your mind, but somehow Cove was in, in, in strictly, intrinsically linked, intrinsically linked with this place. After all these years, it would be weird to scan the horizon and not find him there, as surreal as a shore with, as surreal as the shore without the sea. The distance between you, you was growing shorter by the second. Hearing the grass and earth crunch under your feet, Cove turned, a grin, a grin spreading over his face as he saw you. You took your place standing behind him, on the crest of the poppy hill, looking out, out over the ocean. Same as you'd done on countless times sin, since he, he'd first arrived, when you found him on this very same spot. Richie. He had officially broken silence, the spell, the spell that, you, that had held you both in place. He looked at him expectantly. <clears throat> There's something I've always kind of wondered about. He cocked his head, giving you a sidelong glance. What did you think about when we first when we met? I was just a kid you'd never seen before, bawling his eyes out on a hill next to your house. He chuckled, his eyes drifting towards the sea beyond before flickering, flickering back to you. The way his gaze pulled back to you made it clear that he was genuinely invested in the topic. Luckily for him, you remembered what initially struck you in that moment, as if, as if it had only happened yesterday. <coughs> well, oh, <laughs> well, I remember noticing your very bright green hair. Cove burst into genuine laughter at your reply. Hmm. I guess that's fair, but, but it, it did kind of stand out. Sighing a bit, you continued to reminisce about the first meeting. I also remember feeling bad about what, ha what was happening. I remember that too. He ran, he ran a hand through his hair. You knew his line of questioning wasn't, wasn't an end before, even, bef even before he spoke again. I mean... Do you remember what you thought about me? You know, as a person. Was I annoying or mean or... I wanted to get to know you. I didn't know what the feelings were at the time, but I thought you were cute right away. I thought you were special somehow. Honestly, honestly it was love at first sight, though I didn't realize it at the time. I was just worried about you because you were about you because you were so sad. I don't really remember anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> I always thought you were special somehow. Cove brought, brought a hand to his mouth, half hiding his self-conscious smile. His wavy wavy eyebrows were raised in, in open amazement. I, well, oh, um, thank you for feeling that way. Aw, he scrunched his eyes clo closed, regretting his phrasing. Uh, that sounded weird. I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm glad. Cove's hand drifted to the scar on his arm, his fingers unconsciously gliding over the mark. It was much less noticeable that, than it had been when, when the neon pink cast had come off, first come off, shrunk, shrunken gradually over the years as his body healed and dwarf, dwarfed it in comparison to his growing body. <clears throat> Still, his fingers came back to it without thinking. You gave a half smile, not meeting your eyes. I feel bad now. The the thoughts I had were, well, considering that what you were thinking, I come across as a lot worse of a kid. You didn't like me. 
No. It definitely wasn't that. Cove lifted his head up, finally committing to meet your eyes fully once more. I remember you that day. I remember it really well. I don't think I'd ever been able to forget. I can picture the way you looked back then, when I first saw you standing right there. It was... I still know the expression on your face when you chose to sit with me in the grass. He chuckled self-derisively, self interrupting his own monologue. <laughs> You scared me at first. I figured I'd be alone out there until I had to face my, my dad again. Then suddenly another kid appeared out of nowhere. It was startling, but I got over the I got over that got over that fast. You were a strange person in a strange place, but in that moment you were exactly what I needed. Somebody I could talk to freely about what was happening and how it made me feel. And you listened to me. You stayed with me. He sighed and bit his lip. As if, as if giving a small smile. I, uh... I was a little bit spoiled growing up. Yeah, you were... It wasn't bad. You were dealing with a lot. You let him continue. He looked off again, seeking clarity for his thoughts in the expanse of the night sky. What I'm trying to say is... When I was younger, I viewed myself basically as the center of the universe. I didn't even imagine it wasn't like that. I mean... Things didn't simply happen. That would... That would be... That would be weird. <laughs> According to my little kid brain, it, it made far more sense that everything in my life was, had a specific connection to me somehow, right? He saw affirmation in you. Wavy eyebrows raised as he tried to explain his childlike logic. So at the time, you felt almost unreal. Like, you weren't just any... Just anyone, some other kid who happened to live in, in a neighborhood with with your own whole life whole life that wasn't connected to Cove Holden. Not no, to me, you were there so that you could find me when I was lost. Though it turns out you were there for that. There for that. You were trying to find me because something had sent you specifically to do that. I just didn't expect it to be my dad. I guess he knew more about what I needed than I thought. He chuckled, shaking his head as he shook off the, off the thought. I kind of expected it to vanish like a dream when that night was over. I would have- I would have- I would wake up and everything would be the same again. That's- I'd be back in my bed at home. My real home. With both my parents. The future was something I couldn't picture anymore. I didn't know what school would be like when I went back, or the table, or the table where I'd eat breakfast the next morning, or anything. And if I couldn't imagine it, how could I think it was something actually happening? I couldn't grasp my new reality. It was a bit too big for me to hold all at once, so I never thought I'd see you again. Then Cove beamed at you, his eyes shining bright. <laughs> I never would have been able to guess that t ten years later, when I had grown up. The two of us would still be together. I'm so glad I met you. It was hard to believe it's been so long. I guess that makes me your dream come true. <laughs> Mere words couldn't encompass the joy you felt. You smiled. I'm so glad I met you. I feel the same about you. But the smile had faded from his face as, as his eyebrows drew together. That was the worst day of my life at the time. The day my family broke apart. It was too heavy for me to even think about. I felt that way for I don't know how long. He held a hand over his heart, connecting with the pain he'd felt as a child, and looked at you earnestly. It's okay. But that was never tr really true. Things have only gone better with me and my dad. And with dad and mom, it was the change we all needed. His eyes. His eyes were growing misty. So when I remember that time right now, it's not the point that my life was over. It was only the moment that I met the man I love. Aww. When I was crying to a stranger over what I thought I lost, I didn't have any idea that it would be the one thing in the world that, that I actually wouldn't be able to live without. I love you. I never want to lose you. You're so wonderful. Thank you for all this. You couldn't reply to that. 
I think the first option is simple enough. You took it in a breath. Forever amazed whenever, whenever you spoke those words. Or he took it in a breath, my bad. I love you too, Richie. Then you teared up, then you grinned back at him. Come here, you. <clears throat> he leaned in, in he leaned into the kiss, his lips, his lips soft against yours. Cove sighed contently. His voice was delicate as the petals on the poppies which crowned this hill. Hey Richie, I'm so grateful you always took care of me. You didn't know you didn't even know what to say say back to that. His heartfelt appreciation left you speechless. He tilted his head up, lost in thoughts of, in, lost in the sparse clouds above. I wonder how late it is. I guess it doesn't really matter. My dad is fine with me being out when, whenever. You could just, you could just use your phone to check the time. You could still text your dad about what you're doing. You could, te you could still text your dad about what you're doing. I'm gonna message my moms. My, my moms might care, but I don't feel like telling them. You wanted to make sure you message. Your mom about what was going on, you know, quietly. <clears throat> you could just use your phone to check the time. I know. Sure, I could, but I'm probably not gonna. Are you going to lay in the grass now? Wow, how'd you know? <laughs> Lucky guess, Ko. With a chuckle, Ko flopped down on the ground and laid his back. His usual way of spending time there. He laid down and snuggled against him. You know what? Why not? You lowered yourself into Cove's side in the, gra in the grass and wrapped an arm over his chest. Cove smiled at you and used his free hand to cradle your face. The both of you fully settled, settled in, in, on, in to relax on the hill. It felt like just the beginning of one of your nightly outings, but then you realized the sun was peeking out over, over the horizon. Oh god, we didn't get a wink of sleep, did we? Ko spoke up with a disbelieving tone. Huh. It really was late. Your neighbor your neighbor wasn't a stranger to being awake at dawn. However, not like the however not like this. He was normally an early sleeper and early riser. This unexpected sunrise particularly awed him. The two of you watched on the silent silently as the sun began to light the world. Ko then propped himself up on, on the backs of his arms and looked at at you with a soft expression on his face. Do you want to go back home? I could carry you if you're too tired. I'd rather stay a little longer. You could resist you couldn't resist a yawn, but you were serious. You couldn't it couldn't be time to go already. Ko chuckled affectionately and grip, gripped you a little more. I get it. Okay, but it's been a long day. We've had we had a lot of th we've done a lot of things, like really a lot. It has to end sometime. <clears throat> I know, you're right. Yeah, too bad I am that one, huh? I am on that one, huh? But we can stay if you want to. Cove smiled brightly at you, as warm as the new rays of the sun that were tickling your skin. In that moment, you couldn't have appreciated him being there more. <laughs> You moved your face forward and gave gave Cove a small kiss. He tilted his head against yours. <laughs> I love you so much. And despite this be being the second time you said said it said it this excursion, Cove was newly thrilled once more. Richie, I love you. And the two of you the two of you remained together on that familiar poppy hill where you first met until the world began to fade and blur. You are falling asleep. A few more gentle words drifted into your consciousness. See you tomorrow. Your eyelids dipped, but you felt good. You were safe and relaxed. Everything that had come before this had reassured you of that. You were confident that you that you op you were confident that you opened them again, things would be okay. You opened your eyes and instead of walls of your room, you were surrounded by open sky. It was not pil soft pillows and sheets underneath you, but the bed of the earth and grass that had, that you'd taken last night. The day welcomed you with a shining sun, a refreshing breeze, and the chirping song of birds. 
You cut your face with your hands as you sat up, feeling an, the imprint of the blades of grass leaving lines on your cheeks. Richie, hearing your name, you lowered your hands and looked around. There he was, your most influential neighbor, Cove Holden. Oh! <laughs> I didn't expect this. He had made himself very comfortable, lay, laying on his stomach with jewelry and shoes taken off and a flower in his hand. Good morning. Good morning to you too. Cove laughed, tickled with with overall situation and simply being able to spend time like this. <laughs> Told you I'd see you tomorrow. <laughs> At the exact same day, Cove. <laughs> Pretty safe bet. We we see each other nearly every day. Alright, good for you. I'm glad I'm glad you were right. Smile at him. Pretty safe bet we see each other nearly every day. So smiling, you shook your head and let Cove into his victory. Cove turned his head up to the sky, his expression content. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna be a nice day. We'll have to come up with something to do to make most of it. He trailed off, blinking slowly in the sunlight. Someday when we're even older than, than we are now, I wonder what we'll be we'll end up remembering this moment for. <sighs> what will we feel when we look back at it? Will it be the same as what we're feeling right now? It's nice. I can't see the future. It, I can't see what the future is going to look like again, but I think that's all right. <laughs> you were way too sentimental. I'm pretty sure things... Pretty sure I'm going to have forgotten about all this. I think I'll mark a nurse. I think it'll mark another new start for me. I don't know, but I'm looking forward to finding out. Um... I think it'll mark a new start for me. Ko's eyebrows lifted as he, as he turned to look at you. That's a good one. I want to think about it like that too. His eyes just... He, he had the hill sprawl, sprawling out before you. And down below were, were the wild hill and nature gave way to civilization. Your home and Coe's laid down at the bottom, neatly filled among the other houses in the neighborhood. Hey Richie, I bet I can beat you to getting back to the road. You, la you laughed amused by the wager that reminded you of so many moments in your youth. As much as I like to hear, like it here, it's okay if we leave now. We can always come back to see the poppies and the fireflies again, right? Cove met your eyes, waiting for what you were going to say in response. Right, I like that. It is, it really is gonna be another nice day. <coughs> You're amazing. Yeah, I better do that. You're not getting out of that. We'll always be together in one way or the or another. I might be able to manage that. It's really gonna be another nice day. You didn't know how. You didn't know where that came from, but Cove blinked slowly. His eyes still locked on you. Though you didn't need to see his face to know that he adored you. If there if there had been any room for doubt, the tender way he spoke would have filled it up. You're one of a kind, huh? Oh? Cove beamed at you. His expression was so unlike the one he worn when you first found him here, swallowed in sadness and uncertainty. Yet you couldn't help but glimpse that boy once more underneath his bright expression and matured features. He offered you a hand. You accepted it, your palm fitting around his. Cove lifted himself up, pulling you along too. Our parents probably aren't going to come running for us at this time. We've got to make our own call. And I say that we can't hide away forever. Poppy Hill is, Poppy Hill is just one part of things. There's more out there for, for us than this time. This place alone, let's enjoy it. You couldn't say whether you you were the one that broke into r a run, if Cove had been the one started, or if your feet had simultaneously made that choice of you of your both. The end result was the same, with the two of you dashing down the hill like children, but with a nostalgic revelry that you, that could only come as an adult. As the wind whipped past you, you knew that family and friends were waiting at the at the end of your sprint. There were more memories to make, after all. Life takes another step forward. Whoa. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, hold up, that's it? 
Wait, 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 what? Wait, that's the ending? No effing way! Wait, there's music? There's music! You know what, I'm just gonna let these credits roll. Thank you for playing. Oh, this is amazing. This is probably the most amazing story I've ever played it in the history of my chat. Oh, wait. Hold on. In between. So there is more to it. Okay, then. Well. <clears throat> um, I believe we're going to be ending this episode right here. So thank you guys so much for watching this amazing video. A video. I really like that ending song. That was a, that was awesome. I'm guessing there's there's gonna be so there is gonna be definitely more to this as we go on. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to leave a like, comment what you think, share this with your friends, and be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss a single notification. I'll see all of you in the next video. Goodbye.